Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Thanks so much for taking time out of your Wednesday nights to join us here. Um, I hope the noise in the other parts of my house aren't too distracting. Um, and I hope everyone got a chance to be outside and enjoy some of the sunshine today. Um, we have quite a few speakers, a couple who have added on to our agenda since it went out um, at the beginning of the week. But um, thank you everyone for agreeing to speak and I'm gonna hand it over to Roy. Thank you. Thanks, Emily. Hi, everybody. Um, it's nice to see your faces, I guess, because that's what we look at these days, faces and backgrounds and all those kind of fun things. Uh, but thanks for, for joining us um, tonight. Just a very kind of a, a quick update. Um, while I'm, I'm kind of getting COVID fatigue from just giving you COVID updates, I'll still provide them anyway. Um, you know, it, it's kind of leveled off for us a bit. Uh, we are still concerned about some of the uh, holdover from the February break. Um, and we did have some cases this week, um, which is just a reminder to all of us to please remain vigilant. You know, we can't let our guard down now, especially now as we are expecting uh, vaccines to really start rolling out for everybody. But um, it's really an important time for for all of us to uh, try to stay as safe as we, as we can. Um, at our elementary school, we've had three new cases this week, two in one classroom and another one. Um, and uh, do, when we do our contact tracing now, as you know, there's new guidelines in place, which are helpful to us because um, in most cases where we do not have to quarantine an entire class, um, we only have to quarantine those within a six foot radius and, and contact. So uh, I believe it's about half a class uh, in these particular cases that we've had to quarantine. Um, at the middle school, we've had one case this week. And at the high school, we've also had one case this week. Again, a uh, limited number of people to quarantine because of the new guidelines. Um, District-wide, we've had four non-instructional staff members, employees who have um, uh, tested positive. <clears throat> um, and so again, it's just, you know, it's still running rampant uh, through us and through everyone. And we really have to stay on top of it as best, as best we can. Um, especially now, you know, um, you've probably seen as much as I have about uh, the number of districts who are starting to begin to invite students in full time. Um, you know, they're starting to phase in various levels. I kind of sit back and smile a little bit at that because we've been doing that for a long time. They're so, starting to catch up, but that's a little selfish pride, sorry, um, <laughs> for all the work that our staff has done. But um, Part of the part of this is because vaccines are starting to roll out, and a number of uh, teachers are and have been getting vaccine uh, vaccinated. We have, I think, somewhere around sixty to sixty-five percent of our staff who have either received one or two shots, and we hope that it'll continue to go in that direction. Um, the other thing that's impacted a number of districts' decisions to bring people back, bring students back, is that we're um, in a number of calls over the last couple of weeks, we do expect the Department of Health to reduce the six foot distance mandate down to three feet, as long as you have masks and barriers. Now, we are not necessarily looking to go down to three feet in, our, in any case, um, but um, as you may have seen or may have heard, we are planning to have the high school students back in full time starting uh, March 15th. Um, and there may be a couple of rooms where we have to go down to five feet or perhaps four feet, but we do feel safe in doing that because we have barriers in place and we also have obviously people wearing masks. So we're very comfortable doing that. Uh, it does coincide and the reason we're able to do that now as well is because our capital projects are starting to uh, really come down to the finish line, uh, particularly the new guidance suite and the new high school atrium or entrance. Um, we expect to get the guidance suite online by March 12th, uh, which allows us then to take the old or the existing guidance office and turn it back into a classroom. So that provides some additional space. And there's another uh, room uh, that's been uh, offline for us on the third floor uh, because of the construction uh, and the way egress works. That'll come back online. So we have the ability to move some classes around in the high school and put them in larger rooms and, and things like that. So we are really excited 
um, to be able to have all our students in K-12 starting March 15th. It's going to be a, a fun time, I hope, and hopefully some semblance of normalcy will start to appear for us. But again, we can't let our guard down because things seem to be normal because we know they're not. Um, the other thing that uh, is going on are athletics. As you know, the athletic seasons have, have uh, started to kick in. We are winding down our uh, winter season, basketball, the high-risk sports in basketball and, um, and hockey. They are having a limited playoff, regional playoff system uh, for basketball uh, and hockey. Uh, there's a one week overlap between that and the fall two season. Fall two season means football. Uh, so that will start on Monday officially. Uh, and then there'll be that one week overlap between uh, the end of winter uh, sports and the beginning of fall two sports. The other thing we just learned is that modified sports, uh, modified football has been approved. Uh, so that will provide an opportunity for our middle, middle schoolers to have some uh, sense of, a, of an athletic season, if you will, for um, fall two. It's a short season, obviously. I think it's six weeks in length. And then we can roll it right, right into the spring season, uh, which has been approved as well. So, um, you know, we're moving along. Um, the end of the year is going to come fast and furious to us because we have a lot of activities to pack into a short amount of time. But uh, we do want to make the end of the year as close to a normal experience for our kids as we can, uh, particularly the high school seniors. And we are planning on having a prom. Uh, or at least a senior gathering, if it can't be a full-fledged prom by that point. Um, we're planning for a graduation to be outside again, and um, we you know, see some, some relief on some of those guidelines already, and hopefully that'll continue as well. So we're on the upswing, I think, um, hopefully the uh, towards the tail end of this uh, whole pandemic. But um, again, I encourage you to please do your best to, to stay safe. And the last thing uh, I just want to mention is that, um, uh, well, two things actually, I apologize. One is on Saturday, we have our second board uh, budget workshop Saturday morning. Uh, we are having a special meeting first to approve three off cycle grants from the foundation. Thank you, foundation, uh, that help us out tremendously. Uh, and then we roll right into our budget workshop where we will be presenting a balanced budget for next year. And the good news is, despite all the revenue challenges um, uh, and our cap at 1.7%, we expect to have a, a budget come in with no loss of staff or program. So we're very happy about that as well. Um, and at the next board meeting on the 23rd of March, the board will be approving uh, the Monday after Easter as the give back day that's in the teacher's contract. So that will be a school closed day as well. It'll extend the, the spring break one extra day. So that's all the news that I have available. So I'll be happy to answer any questions if anybody has any. Thanks so much. Um, as always, I think we all know if you have a question, you can throw it out in the chat. Um, so thank you, Roy. Um, and thank you for the nice segue into the Bronxville School Foundation. Um, Wendy Fahey is going to give us an update on their behalf. There we go. Sorry, sometimes hard to unmute. <laughs> um, so thanks everyone. Our spring grant evaluation process has begun um, and we have a great slate of grant requests from an array of different initiatives from um, the arts, athletics, health and wellness and um, many academic disciplines across the elementary, middle, and high school, which is wonderful. We're so grateful to everyone who's generously supported our community drive. It's not too late if you'd like to still make a donation. Our follow-up mailing is going out um, to the community at the end of this week, which will have the um, envelopes for mail back. Or you can also go visit the foundation website um, if you'd like to make a donation that way. Our hope is to achieve 100% participation this year from uh, school families. So it'd be wonderful if you're able to make any, any form of contribution. Um, we also will be sending out a short virtual tour of the school in the next few weeks, which was made um, recently and it's such a great way for all of us to be able to see the changes to the interior of the building um, and it has some really 
incredible footage. Uh, and I think that it's just really nice to be able to see since none of us have been able to be in the building um, during the construction and changes. And then so keep your eye out for that because it's really kind of exciting and fun to see what's been changed so far and um, how the foundation's work has impacted that as well. So um, thank you very much. And that's all for me. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to any foundation member or you can reach out to me as well. Thank you. Um, thanks so much. And um, the sports situation is constantly evolving. I heard there were some changes today that Roy alluded to, um, but I've asked Sarah Kenny to give an update on what that means for modified sports. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, so fall two com is comprised of two sports. It's um, swimming, but it's only at the varsity level. So if anyone has a competitive swimmer out there in the middle school, you can take a physical test to test into the high school. Um, so if anyone's interested, reach out to Joe Haven about swimming. Um, and football was approved. So far, there have been 25 to 26 kids who have signed up for Modified. They're expecting it to start um, March 15th. Um, more than There's going to be two new coaches this year. Um, Chris Lockwood is now a JV coach, and Marino, unfortunately, had surgery, leg surgery. So he's um, on the sidelines this year. So there's going to be a Zoom call probably a week from Monday and or Tuesday. It could be pushed up into next week. Um, for anyone who is in the middle school whose child is trying out for JV, the meeting will be next week. Um, the athletic department will send out more details on that, where they're gonna go over everything from schedules to safety procedures, both for COVID and for um, tackle football for safety procedures. So most questions will be answered at that time. Um, the season's gonna be March 15th to April 25th. It's gonna go through spring break. Um, there are going to be three to five games this year, and normally there are six. Um, the schedule for the first two weeks will likely be every day, Monday through Friday. Normally Modified does not practice on Wednesday. You have to have 10 practices before you can have a game. Um, they might, due to safety reasons for COVID and for teaching these kids how to play tackle correctly, they could be 15 practices before they have their first game. So they're, they're working that out. Um, they want to, um, Joe Haven is at the hockey game tonight at the playoff hockey game. That's why he's not here, but he just wants to instill on everybody that safety will be taught first. Um, that's going to be the highest priority and not COVID. It's how to tackle correctly. Most of these kids have not played since last March. And so uh, conditioning is highly important to him and as is um, safety of football. Um, and again, he'll speak more to that on the Zoom call. And he also highly encourages anyone who hasn't played football to come out. It's a good season to start because it's going to be a condensed season. It'll be a good opportunity for your child to know if he likes it, doesn't like it. And then um, because the fall season's so close that it will roll right into um, practices this summer and into fall. And then lastly, he wants you to know that helmets are provided by the school. We have state-of-the-art helmets and we have the best available for our players and that all helmets used by the modified players are as good as those used by D3 colleges. So that will be provided by the school as will some other equipment. Um, so if you have any questions, just put it in the chat, but um, uh, any news on modified soccer in the fall? Um, is, so the news on spring right now is anything that normally is played in the spring will be played this spring. That is the plan. Um, I will ask the question on soccer and get back to you. I don't know. That's normally not a spring. Um, football is only for seventh and eighth graders and sixth graders are not eligible for fall two. Um, there are, just so you know, outside the community, there are a lot of flag football teams being played this spring, um, but that's not going to be school run. But no, it's only for seventh and eighth graders only. Thanks, Sarah. Sure. Um, Next, um, Bold has an update for us. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be either Neve or Leah. Hi there, um, it's Neve here. Yes, at Bold, we are doing a book read and it's called ADHD 2.0 and it's by um, Ned Hallowell. I'm sure anyone who knows anything about ADHD, whether you're, you have a child with ADHD or even yourself, 
Um, this is a great read. I just started it and we are hoping to get Ned Hallowell to come and speak in May. So if you can start by, um, you know, buying the book, we ordered it and uh, it's at Wormrath and we will be discussing it in May. Also, we are starting a series where um, we're going to be starting next Wednesday. You will get emails from the PTA and from Bold itself. And we're going to be doing um, like every, every month, we want just anyone who has a child with a 504 um, or an IEP or anyone wants to know anything about special ed in the school to please just reach out to us um, the bold committee and we're going to be there to speak with you and we'll be sending out something that you can just log into our zoom sessions and it, we just really want to do this as a way to connect more with the bold community and to support families um, so you will be just watch out for our emails so thank you so much thank you um, I would love to introduce Jen Heathwood on behalf of the PTA Hi, thank you. Um, so first I wanted to talk about a couple exciting things that are coming up from the PTA. This week is, um, or and the next week are Spring Into the Arts Festival. And um, this is a new program that started last year and it's a way for us to celebrate students in the performing and um, arts and also in the art classes. And what we're doing is on March 4th at 6.30, there is a live stream open mic night. It's gonna be a YouTube um, uh, premiere and it'll be on our district YouTube channel and high school students will be performing and it, it should be really exciting. And um, you can tune in, it's kind of nice. And last year it was at the library, which was great, but this year, with it being on YouTube, I think a larger audience will get to watch. So it's kind of exciting. And then March 5th is the kickoff to the Downtown Gallery Week where um, student artwork will be featured in the um, store windows around town. Um, and it's K through 12 students. So please take a stroll through town and check out our artwork. And um, the 5th through the 10th is a kid scavenger hunt and art stroll. And kids, um, I expect mostly elementary school kids, but anyone can print out the scavenger hunt and, and the, um, well, the scavenger hunt's for everyone, but there is also a printable that people can color and hand in and will be um, displayed in windows. So I think it's a really great way to celebrate our arts. And um, also we have an all school PTA meeting coming up on March 18th. And at that meeting, the administration is gonna introduce our new diversity, equity and inclusion curriculum and the state standards around that. And the PTA is gonna talk about our new DEI committee that we're forming. Uh, so hopefully you guys can attend that and that'll be on Zoom at 7 p.m on the 18th. And lastly, I wanted to talk about our volunteer tribe, which is happening now. Um, next year, I'm going to be PTA chair. And um, I'd love for any and all of you to get involved. I think I'm hoping it's going to be a really great year. We've had such kind of a dim year this year, even though some really great things have happened. We've we've had to really tailor back things. And I think people, I'm hoping that people are really excited to jump in and get involved and get out there. Um, perhaps, you know, the PTA supports all three schools and um, their, the money raised by membership and fundraisers um, helps us to do all our activities. But most important is the donation of time, expertise, and ideas ideas by all the volunteers, all of the parents involved, and the administration that works with us. Um, so perhaps just to give you some highlights of what we do, hopefully you enjoyed Light Up the Night in the Fall, which brought us together. Um, maybe you participated in the teacher letter teacher appreciation letter writing campaign, or you've seen the signs at the school thanking the teachers and the administration and staff, or perhaps you attended the How to, How to Raise an Adult book club, 
uh, or the Alec Miller discussion on wellness and wise mind parenting at the school. Um, so all of these are examples of what the PTA has done this year, and there's so much more opportunity for next year. Um, we're even coming up on our the 100th anniversary of the school in 2022. So I hope you all will lean in and get involved and become a part of the PTA and volunteer. And you can go to uh, bronxvillepta.org and there is um, clickable places where you can go and click on and sign up right through there, or you can feel free to contact me. Thanks so much, Jen. Um, I'm also going to introduce Caroline Dimitri, who is our vice chair this year and um, just a great girl all around, as is Jen. I've, I am in the unique position. I've been able to work really closely with both of them. Um, so I think if you have the heart for volunteerism, it's a great time to get involved in the school. There's a lot um, of fun opportunities out there. and all sorts of creativity is appreciated. So handing it over to Caroline. Sure, thanks. Thanks, Emily and Jen, you've made my job easy. Um, there's The good news is there's not a ton to talk about because we've had a great uh, turnout of volunteers, which is super helpful when we're putting together our middle school council slate. But um, there's always a job for anyone. So uh, if you're working a lot or you're not sure how much time you can give. We have a position for everyone. Uh, in particular, uh, character and community is a great thing that we do. And there's a lot of community outreach. And some of the organizations that we've worked with in the past have been on pause with us coming in. And I'm hoping next year that will open up and provide more opportunities for our kids. And um, there's a lot of subcommittees involved and there's big jobs, small jobs. So if you're looking for something to do, uh, that is available as well as a, a several other uh, positions. So you can reach out through the PTA website. You can reach out to Jen or you can reach out directly to me, Caroline Dimitri, D-I-M-I-T-R-I. -I. I'm in the directory. And then I can move quickly and get you, get you set up. So thank you. And I look forward to meeting all of you and, and working together. And we're all excited to watch and see what you can do. It's going to be a great year. Um, and I think that just the, the easing of COVID restrictions will make us all feel a lot better. Um, next, we have Alyssa Dioguardi, our keynote speaker. Thank you so much for making time for us tonight. Um, she has been working um, with some of the parents uh, for bringing in a speaker about the Holocaust. So I'd love to hear more about that and all the other fun things that you have going on. Hi, um, hope everyone's doing well. Um, I've never been a keynote speaker before. It's very exciting for me. Um, so thanks for having me. Um, and before I start, I just wanted to share just if it was brought up the letter writing campaign this year that was organized was was wonderful. Um, it was a really emotional experience for me and just a very well needed um, boost. So thank you for that. Uh, it was really special. Um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our Holocaust unit, about what we have going on next week, um, and if time permits, a little bit about um, what literacy and reading and writing might look like in the time of COVID. And every time I say that, I kind of the, it gets me to the title of love in the time of cholera. For some reason, that's just where my brain goes, but I digress. Um, so this this we're going to have two Holocaust survivors join us via Zoom next week um, during our academic periods on Friday to talk to us about their experiences. Um, this aligns about when the eighth graders would have been in Washington, D.C., um, and they they would have been able to go to the National Holocaust Museum, which is an extraordinarily powerful experience and a nice bookend on our Holocaust unit in English. Um, so I'll just briefly take you through that before I talk more about what's going on on Friday. Um, the Holocaust unit in English is um, really, it's really wonderful and complex and difficult. Um, not difficult in the terms of like the difficulty of the texts we're reading, but difficult in that we're asking students to understand um, something really beyond our capability for all of us. Um, my, I, I'm, I was raised Jewish. I have a very personal connection to this. this is something I grew up talking about all the time. Um, and we talk about that in class that we're embarking on this journey where we have to understand something that 
you know, even by reading firsthand experiences is extremely difficult to process um, emotionally. Um, so we read Night, which is Elie Wiesel's um, firsthand account of his survival at Auschwitz. Um, and then what we do is we watch Life is Beautiful, the Italian film by Roberto Benigni. It's a really wonderful contrast. Night is dark. It's really hard. Um, and the kids do such a wonderful job talking about it in class and unpacking what's going on. Um, and uh, life is beautiful is just such a such a an uplifting and wonderful contrast to that experience. While we get to compare and contrast similar relationships um, and how that might look different and motivating human behavior. So we're actually finishing that tomorrow. Um, and then we go into a little bit of kind of psychology 101 and look at the motivating behaviors behind say what it means or takes to be a bystander. Um, we look at Stanley Milgram's work on authority. Um, and we also, uh, we look at Jane Elliott's work in the blue eyes, brown eyes experience uh, experiment, excuse me. <laughs> um, and this year we're introducing Ash's experiment on conformity. So we get, we get a little bit of the science behind how human psychology works. Um, in order to try and make sense of what was going on in the world at the time and across um, the continent of Europe. Um, and it doesn't provide answers, but it provides a start. Um, the issue that I always have with this unit is that it's really hard. To, I, I don't want to end on like this terribly depressing note, but more about, okay, so now that we have all of this information, what do we do and how do we take this information forward with us? Um, so we also read Ali Wiesel's Nobel Peace Prize acceptance speech where he talks about his hopes for how to use this experience and turn it into a greater force for good. Um, and this year we're also going to be ending the unit by focusing on the righteous, the people that stepped up and helped and defied those um, psychological and survival instincts in order to help people. Um, but I'm really, really excited because we have a very unique and special opportunity this year to have two survivors come and talk with us. Um, Judith Altman and Alan Moskin are going to be joining us via Zoom on Friday. Um, it's going to take the place of all of our eighth grade academics that day. Um, and the students will have the opportunity to hear and witness their firsthand accounts break, gather, discuss their thoughts, and also have the opportunity for questions and answers with our two speakers. Um, in addition to that, we've planned a few activities to help unpack this experience for them. Um, we talk a lot about the fact that World War II is both very close and kind of far away, um, and that our students, we are gonna be the last group of people that are entrusted with the stories of survivors that after after us, um, everything is gonna become secondhand. Um, so what we're gonna ask students to think about this year is, okay, now what? We were entrusted with these stories, these very personal stories about, you know, this, this great tragedy. So what is our responsibility as citizens, as humans, as community members, and how do we pay that forward? So part of what we're going to be asking students to do is think about that question and actually write a letter to either their future self or a future generation based on their experience listening and hearing from um, these survivors firsthand. So um, that's in a nutshell um, what the next two weeks look like for us in English. And obviously if anybody has any questions, please um, you can ask or just drop them in the chat. Um, but I'm really excited. This is a really unique opportunity, one that I've never um, been able to be a part of before. Um, I was privileged enough to be able to watch Ellie Wiesel speak when I was in college. Um, uh, but this is, this is really, really special. Um, so I'm very excited uh, about this and I'm very excited about the opportunity and the way that we got to work together and put this, um, put this together. Yes, um, I see there's a question, is this just for eighth graders? Right now, yes, this is just for the eighth grade. Um, it comes at the very end of our unit and our Holocaust unit as students are completing their project on the righteous as well, so. The next thing um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about was literacy and reading during COVID. Um, everybody's schedule, norm, um, approach to everything, I think, has been really upended. Um, and so I was thinking a little bit about this. I was actually thinking twofold about 
um, my, why I like to read the things that I do and how reading kind of evolves over time. So I have a daughter who's just over one and she doesn't love books. Like she tolerates them. Like she looks at books and more specifically, she looks at like the same two books over and over and over again. And I know we'll eventually break that pattern. And it takes kind of like everything in my being not to like pull the book out of her hand and be like, now it's time to turn the page. <laughs> like we have, do whatever you want with the book, right? I want her to have these positive experiences, read the book upside down, throw the book across the room. I don't care, just interact with it in some way, shape or form. Um, and I was thinking about this a lot the last couple of nights. Her book right now is, is Llama Llama Red Pajama. It's like the only thing she'll read. I can recite it in my sleep. Um, and I'm very excited for when she chooses a new one because I'm very sick of this book. <laughs> um, but it's the only one she'll look at. And the other thing she'll do is she'll um, hold another book while I read to her, but she won't like she wants me to read this book while she's like looking at something totally different. Um, and I was thinking a lot about how those behaviors are encouraged when students and, and kids are really young and we really want them to start with this wonderful positive experience with reading um, and come to it on their own and then somewhere along the line that gets lost and by the time i see kids in eighth grade you know and there's going to be some kids that have a proclivity for reading and some that are just like you know it's not my thing i never connected with it um, but all of a sudden it starts to feel like work and that is something that I think COVID aside and, and, you know, now too, is something that for me is really important to try and recapture. I, when we do independent reading in class, I generally don't care what kids read, as long as they're reading something and engaging with words on a page that they enjoy, um, which I, I think about the, the next, sorry, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> um, and I think about the reason that I became a teacher and Part of that is like, I do love interacting with kids, but but I, I love to read. I love the content. And that's really where my relationship with teaching started. Um, and I think now more it's more important than ever to help try and reignite that love or that, that maybe not love, maybe love's a very strong word. Um, I say it because <laughs> I love to read, um, but that connection and that engagement, I, you know, we all know why reading is important all of the different things it benefits students in all the different subject areas. Um, but I do think that to reignite that positive experience is super important. Um, and as well as, and especially in the time of COVID, um, without screens as much as possible. Um, our kids are on screens a lot. And part of it is by necessity. Part of it is, you know, the changing technology. Students are just more in tune to being on a screen than perhaps in the past. Um, but a push that I've had in class is a move away from typing based notes, um, reading on screens, if it's possible, I try and give everybody the option um, to re-engage with that in a way that's positive and, and just like a break. Um, because th there's a fatigue that we experience with that screen exposure. Um, so, that I just wanted to share a little bit about my thoughts on that. And I think, you know, some of the ways to do that, um, and I, I usually, and I'll, I'll be honest, like it's been really hard to keep up with my reading for enjoyment recently. Um, it's really difficult. And I'm sure that many of you can empathize that there's, all, there's so much going on and people need so much from us right now that it's hard to take those, that time for yourself. And when I do, I just wanna turn my brain off um, and, I think when we come back to it, setting aside that time for something that's specifically for enjoyment, not read this because you have to, read this because it's good for you, read this because you're supposed to do it for school, but find something that you connect with, find something, or you know, it could be a magazine article, it could be, it could really be anything, right, that um, your child is interested in, because that's ultimately what's going to reignite and foster that connection and that engagement is the desire to interact with something that they like and not that they, you know, quote unquote, have to do. So thank you. Um, happy to take any questions or comments. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think this might have been your first time as a keynote speaker, but I can pretty much say it's not going to be your last time. You were wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, your passion just jumps out of the screen. So thanks. Um,
If you guys have any questions, you can um, put them, them in the chat. I'm just gonna go through our committee reports quickly. Um, I hope that um, everyone has Dr. Kelly Grayling in their calendar for next Thursday night at seven. Um, I'm sorry, for tomorrow night at seven, she's speaking about how to listen to your children and how to help them stay calm through val validation. She's the second speaker in a series um, that Be Well is sponsoring. Um, from the Basque team, there are eight clubs running and they're still trying to figure out if they're gonna run a program in the spring. Um, the eight clubs have been successful even with the zoom fatigue that happens at the end of the day the kids have still been excited about it and they've also found ways to get the kids outside um the teen center team is working on putting together a program for the sixth grade by the end of march um, hopefully before our break um the character and, and community team um, is sponsoring thank you calls on behalf of One Love um, for a fundraiser that they did a couple weeks ago, um, which offers our kids a great opportunity to use the phone skills that they rarely need to use in this modern world. Um, and then hopefully with the weather getting better um, this spring, we'll have more opportunities for volunteer hours as well. Um, and then I, I think everybody got many, many emails right before break, but I just wanted to remind you that we had such a wonderful school-wide, district-wide uh, moment of appreciation for our teachers. Um, Liam Harity, who is the president of the SFL, went over the district loudspeaker to interrupt class and had all the kids stand up um, and applaud. And it was, it was really nice to hear the feedback from the teachers. Um, I think they were really moved by it. Um, and we also had a breakfast that morning for the middle school teachers. We put out um, coffee with muffins and scones from Nutmeg for them to grab and go uh, um, on their way to their mornings. Um, and I think going forward, we're gonna try to institute something like that about um, once a month, whether it's breakfast or if it's a box lunch, um, just something to let the faculty know that we're still thinking about them, even we, though we're not in the building, um, we think they're doing a great job. Um, I think that's it for me. Um, I'm gonna hand it over to Tom, thanks. The most alarming part of Zoom for me is every time I get on this thing, I can see exactly how much hair I'm losing. So it's not a not a lovely thing. Um, uh, good evening, everyone. I, I uh, um, when I when I get a chance to hear Alyssa or really so many of my teachers speak, I'm I'm uh, uh, I'm truly uh, grateful uh, not only to their expertise and their their uh, uh, their professionalism, but for the synergy that exists between them and what they are bringing to each other, and the passion and enthusiasm that that uh, uh, they're able to grow. Uh, this this work being done next Friday is uh, is actually an outgrowth not only of English but it's intertwined with social studies, and the teachers in both disciplines are equally involved and. All of the teachers are aware and and willing participants and, and members in it. So, um, very very happy uh, about all of that. And I'm I'm sure uh, for those of you who uh, haven't had Miss Diaguardi or not to eighth grade yet, um, you're in for a treat. Uh, I want to uh, start just by uh, uh, making a plea to a random sixth grade parent who has written me two emails and I've lost them both. I don't know who has emailed me this. If I have not responded to your two emails, I'm so sorry. I don't know who you are. I, if I did, it wouldn't be lost. I can't, I've scrolled back through. Your, your subject matter was uh, um, parent-teacher conferences and how to, how to get in contact with with parents. And I'm happy to have that conversation. Please, if you're on this meeting tonight, 
thank you for getting in touch with me one last time. I appreciate and promise it'll be the last. Um, and if not, I'll, I'll put a little missive in the bulletin on Friday. Um, but I, I don't know why it keeps, uh, uh, it, it kept disappearing on me. Um, we've heard a little bit about uh, restrictions being eased and some, some new, uh, um, new wafers of, uh, of control being uh, rolled back a little bit. Um, I think uh, uh, we heard today that even some of the travel restrictions have been rolled back a little bit, which, are, which is really great news in certain cases. Um, we are, are um, we're gonna capitalize on that as we can. Um, but as Roy said, um, we're not we're not going to uh, uh, we're not going to do anything uh, dramatic in the middle school. We're going to use every square foot we have. We're going to continue to uh, exercise great caution and 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 uh, uh, the use of PPE and and all of the um, the measures that are in place uh, um, that have kept us safe to date will continue to be in place. Um, but but there are some things that that we are contemplating getting to that should be uh, um, should be a, a boon and a benefit to to all involved. And uh, one thing we're we're in process right now, and we, I don't have a date, I don't have the specifics yet, but we are talking as a faculty about um, how we might be able to do extra help in person. Um, there would have to be some parameters, limits, controls. There'd have to be some form of sign up, um, and and um, you know, for those kids who want to go every day, there would have to be some rotation. Um, but we we are uh, our faculty is very amenable to that idea. But we just want to make sure that we have not only a durable plan but a safe plan, not only for uh, um, for COVID safety, but just for general safety for our kids so that they know if they come to the building, they will be met. Um, to let you know, if we do get through uh, um, the uh, conundrums that are presented within that, um, it will not mean the end of Zoom or uh, uh, online extra help. That will continue as well. So a student could join extra help uh, uh, by going through the link uh, uh, still, if they if they so chose. So, if for example we we had a cap and the cap was met, um, a student could still come to extra help on Zoom. That that would be completely fine. Um, we should have some uh, uh, some more concrete plans that we will vet internally and and with our central administration uh, 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 before the before the end of this month. And, and hopefully we'll be able to start um, start offering some extra help uh, uh, in person. So we're happy about that. Um, on the same note and in the same vein, we are uh, um, we're working to uh, uh, bring chorus, bring singing to chorus, which is a novel concept. Uh, but at this point of the year, uh, um, I think uh, our chorus students miss singing. Um, we, uh, um, we do have chorus in the auditorium now, which does allow us to uh, uh, offer 12 foot spacing uh, between students. Um, they are not singing yet. We are not doing any, any uh, uh, vocalization uh, uh, um, in, in, um, in chorus at this point, but it is our hope that also before break, we will be able to have limited singing in, in chorus classes. They won't be singing all period, every period. They never did, but they won't be doing that as a general rule. Um, and that's part of the parameters and guidelines for um, the safety um, that needs to be exercised in chorus situations. There has to be a, a time between classes where there is less um, less singing and less breath in the room. Um, so we're, we're taking that into account as well. I'll continue to write about that in the bulletin. We'll continue to let parents know that this is happening so uh, everybody is aware, but, um, but that is our, our hope. And with that information, could Ban be far behind? No, 
we are looking at at um, at band using outdoor space uh, in April uh, in in the same manner that they won't be playing full periods and we're going to move them around so nobody shoots them um, because it's a it's a noisy endeavor and nobody wants to hear five bars of the same song for a full period every day. Um, so uh, uh, Uma Karkala and I are, are talking about how she might be able to uh, uh, use different areas outside on a rotational basis, but it's our hope that that, that will uh, be something that happens uh, in the month of April uh, uh, to some degree. Also, uh, along those same lines, uh, for all three of the uh, um, band, chorus, and orchestra uh, classes, you know we've taken out the one day a week we had a, an early morning uh, music class. Um, they also may have an extra help period uh, um, that's offered in person when we get to that point, and uh, kids who want to go to those classes can, can sign up there as well. Uh, but we're not going to have half classes come in the way we normally would. Um, and finally, um, I saw that somebody asked a question in the comments about graduation and Roy answered it, but in case you didn't see, yes, in some, some shape or form, uh, uh, all signs are pointing towards some form of ceremony, some form of graduation pomp and circumstance uh, in person, uh, not uh, uh, not in cars and, and not, uh, uh, not online, but something in person. What that will look like, what the specifics are, um, we don't know yet. And uh, we have our first uh, meeting to talk about that uh, next week. And um, when we have that meeting, of course, we have to keep in mind that, um, you know, that, that target is moving. And as it as hopefully things become more uh, more permissible and and safer, we'll have more options. Um, but we will make uh, uh, we will make every opportunity possible for us to have as normal a situation as we we can safely provide. Um, but in in March. It's not a good time to speculate what exactly that will look like. Frankly, if you had asked me in September if I thought we would be in every day through March, I, I was banking on somewhere around uh, Halloween. So um, don't bet with me. And, and also, a lot can change in three months for, for, for the better. So um, we, may, we may be very positively surprised at what, what we can do. And I think that that what I'm saying also has relevance to the other two schools. Um, you know, we all, all of us are desirous of having uh, uh, a, a graduation ceremony in, in our schools, and we will do our best to make sure that one happens. Um, last year was certainly an anomaly and it wasn't um, it wasn't to anyone's uh, great satisfaction, but but um, under the circumstances, it was the best we could provide, but that's not new normal by any stretch. Um, the, um, that is the sum total of what I had to speak about, Emily. I, I am happy to take any questions you might have. I don't see any new questions in the chat, which is fine. Okay. Um, well, thank you everybody for making time tonight. Um, and please reach out if you have any ideas or suggestions or comments. Um, thanks. We'll see you at school and hopefully we'll see a lot of you tomorrow night on the um, call with Kelly Grayling. Good night.